Yes, I know you're probably shocked a new video after all this time, and, well, life happens, really. It really does. It gets in the way, it messes things up, and YouTube does happen as well, in that it loves to delete your channel and kind of sap all your spirit you have for doing such a thing in some time. But it also does give you time for reflection, as well as playing more and more games, which is great, which is kind of led me to the thing that really made me want to get back into doing this and that is I Am Setsuna. One of the many games that I've been playing on my now much longer commute to work by train, so the Switch, great for portable games, not all games should be portable but that's a topic for another day. I Am Setsuna is something that has held my interest for quite some time but contrary to what I read on the internet isn't a game that ever got presented as a budget title at least in the UK and has forever held an extremely high price tag and it was only on a lucky sale that I ended up getting it much cheaper. A game that I really think for many reasons doesn't justify that price but the game is also advertising itself on many different features most of which do seem to stem around nostalgia specifically for Chrono Trigger and given that that's just had its big grand steam re-released it seems like this might be a good time to actually buckle down and, you know and tackle I Am Setsuna so here's one of the things that does kind of irk me about it yes it represents itself as a kind of retro Chrono Trigger in spirit I suppose a sister sequel but has nothing to do with the actual game something that has the mechanics of the game though and therefore feels somewhat well like a old friend that you haven't seen for a while when going into play it. Of course the game is not a game based on nostalgia alone and I Am Set Asuna attempts to create a sombre tone and story via personality in both graphics and the actual soundtrack mostly really by presenting you with a snowy wasteland that is your whole game as opposed to most RPGs where it'd probably be a section of a whole game in itself and a score that is completely piano based allowing for the actual games and the actual story of the game to come through and how it wants to portray itself and the story itself of I Am Sensuna does to an extent feel like a retread of Final Fantasy X in its whole sacrifice kind of journey to this girl will save the world by the sacrifice of her own life but it does actually paint a different message to it and I think to an extent it also falls flat on itself as well and yes that does mean there will be spoilers going forward for I Am Setsuna and for the main girl Setsuna herself as well as a few other bits and pieces here and there. To see, you see the story of I Am Setsuna presents you with an I Am Going to kill this character that is your purpose at the start of the game you're actually employed to kill Setsuna something that ironically will actually happen and something I'll get into in a little bit as well but Setsuna is built up to be a character someone you want to experience the journey of and that in itself lies the problem that she's no chrono she's no Yuna to an extent either she's a character who is selfless above all else and that does make for an extremely hard character to relate to she shows no sense of selfish want, she so shows no sense of self-preservation and ultimately through the game you learn that or at least the story seems to be pushing the message that sacrifice is something that shouldn't need to happen in order to protect the greater good. A cycle of sacrifices that has happened over the millennia are something that ultimately by the strongest person coming along or someone who had the strength of friends and family around her to actually fight could do it without needing to sacrifice themselves and buy the world more time. It's a pretty good message really that completely falls flat because ultimately Setsuna chooses to sacrifice herself anyway and not in to save the world but at least as it appears in the game and it's not very well explained either that she's sacrificing herself because she doesn't want the game's big bad ultimately to pass on or go to whatever other world this game has after death that shouldn't be alone she doesn't want the big bad to be alone so she chooses to sacrifice herself along with them in order to help save them and there's no real justification given that why this would make a difference seeing the bad the big bad's already been killed it just doesn't make any sense let alone the fact that you're forced to either do it but it never actually shows it your last choice is do you kill Setsuna yes or no very much like the start of the game as well and very much like the start of the game that is a choice taken out of your hands either it would have been nice to at least had the choice to say yes you know you'll kill her even at the start of the game that would have been hilarious to kill her and just watch the credits roll it would have been great but 
Suna doesn't quite do that and it's a real shame that it chooses to not put the weight on the right parts of the story and expand where it nearly need really needs to. I Am Setsuna isn't a deep game by any real stretch of the imagination. It doesn't expand its characters nearly enough and it certainly doesn't expand the lore of the world. By the time that the big time travel and constantly looping time plot has come up, it's the first major kind of expansion the game has had to its lore that doesn't really present much lore in the first place. You're given the world and you're given some backstory to the characters, some more than others really, and it makes for a very inconsistent party that in all honesty, it's extremely hard to relate to because the game also doesn't force you to use them. Now, this is another side of Setsuna that really could have used some development. I always felt like when I was playing Chrono Trigger that experimenting with the different characters was something that I really wanted to do. Every character felt like they were a different class than themselves and that the characters' skills they had by interacting with one another certainly made for something interesting to happen, yet... Yeah. That's just not the case in in Setsuna, and mostly because there's one early game skill, or two really, that allow you to walk through the entire game without any trouble. In fact, there's only one or two situations through the game that I even felt like my playstyle was forced to change in order to adapt to a specific boss, whether it being played defensively or overly aggressively, or at a certain point that made me need to chip away damage with one character by con while constantly buffing and healing with another two. It's not the best way to play because you realise once you found these two skills, the cyclone based skill that Endear has and the blow beat skill that you can get by coupling your own um, Endear skill with Nidir, I believe which is the pronunciation, every single battle in the game can become a one hit kill or three hits considering that's what this particular attack does. It's absolutely ridiculous that a skill like that wasn't nerfed. But it's also necessary as well during due to the high repetitive nature of the game's battles that take too long to load, that go at too much of a slow pace, and I get that that's what the game's going for specifically. It's a sombre tone of the game, it's a slow progression through snow, and it wants battles that are a much slower pace. I don't think this is great for holding interest in an RPG, and if it wasn't for the game's short length overall, I seriously doubt that many people may have actually gone and seen the game through to its ultimate conclusion. Of course, this is to say nothing of the last minute character who kind of joins you anyway, and he gets next to no real development, which is an absolute shame really. This is something that I think more actual time should have gone into in the game. The priorities, I think, for the game overall just felt wrong, and that maybe they felt so confident they had a story to tell when they didn't really think about the implications of the story they wanted to tell in respect to the actual message it sends across with Setsuna in particular. Obviously, you know you're never going to get a great ending. The game at every stage is telling you this, whether it's from the big snow driven world that you live in and the soundtrack that goes along with it there is nothing hopeful about this world and that's perfectly fine especially if it wants to present all this and then defy expectations by allowing characters to live at the last point this isn't also a final fantasy 10 situation where another character is going to step up and make that sacrificial play and not because they want to it's because there it's implied that they're going to die anyway there is no reason for the ultimate death in i am set sooner the game should have a happy ending and Ultimately, it doesn't, and it's a big letdown because the reasons it gives you for not having that happy ending seem extremely contrived, not well explained enough, and ultimately happen with a character who, while the whole game seems based around you, are not actually empathising with her because of her character in herself not being anything other than completely selfish to the point, or not being completely selfless to the point where. It's almost like she was looking for a reason to die. Maybe that is Setsuna's case, but he's never shown to be suffering from any sort of form of depression from the loss of her other family members, other ones who've been sacrifices. It's ultimately the context of the game is not explained enough for its total character, which is a shame. And there are many questions about I am Setsuna, I still have in its law that I cannot find answers to anywhere. And um, I've not played the Japanese version of this as well, so if it's a case of lost in translation for some of this, which it might very well be, I've not seen evidence of it either. This isn't either a point where things have, or lines have been wholly changed, like in Final Fantasy XV, to give more context between different regions. This is something that just feels lacking, which is a shame. 
I still think if you like games like Chrono Trigger, I Am Setsuna is a game that you will find interesting if you can find it at the right price, but I think it banks too much on nostalgia and an ultimate story that really, if you play it through to its conclusion, will make you feel like you've been cheated at that last moment, which is a real shame. But there you go. That's I Am Setsuna, and if you play it, I'd love to know what you think of it, because it's one that has kind of had me in a very back and forth feeling about it for quite some time, and I'm still very much ambivalent about it now. But there you go. It's got its flaws and it does have its high points as well but let me know what you think of it and see you next time